A property line dispute. It's a story as old as the Bible, but this dispute turned violent and the entire thing happened on camera. We're going to break it down for you guys right now. Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here. It seems like more and more these days, normal situations are getting more and more out of control. Violence is occurring more often. And for some reason, more of them than ever before are being captured on video. We're going to break down this self-defense shooting situation from right outside of Indianapolis. And we're going to discuss what we think happened here, what was done right, what was done wrong. But we want you guys to tell us what you think. What do you think? was done right what do you think was done wrong what would you do if you were the guy at the fence line or if you were the guy on the other side of the fence who you'll see in the video here in just a moment as always guys subscribe to our channel for more content like this and remember we're not lawyers we're just simply telling you what we think we would do if we were in this situation if you would disagree or if you agree let us know in the comment section. I'm going to play it for you once at full speed, then we're going to back it up and slow it down. Let's hit play. I think we're on slow motion. Let me speed it up for you. All right. This guy is kicking the fence, trying to take apart the fence, getting angry. He's kicking it. The whole thing is being captured on a game camera in the neighbor's garden. And right now, the neighbor and this guy are talking smack, and it's so vulgar we can't play it for you on YouTube or else it would get pulled from our channel. In particular, the guy in the lawnmower is talking very poorly about the other guy's wife. At this point, the guy gets on his lawnmower and he begins to drive forward, which you'll see here in just a moment. He takes off on his lawnmower, still shouting. You think it's over, but then the guy backs up on his lawnmower. You see a gun come out. You see this guy draw a gun. A gunfight ensues. Both sides are firing right now at the other. Both sides are firing. Multiple shots fired. The guy on the ground was shot four times, four times in the chest, the guy in the lawnmower. And then it's almost magic. He stands up, as you're about to see, and he walks off the screen. Wait for a couple more seconds and you'll see it. Absolutely incredible. Stands up, still talking smack, and he walks away as though he was unharmed. That was the video, guys, at full speed. I'm going to back it up for you a little bit, and we're going to play it slower to watch a bunch of details you simply can't pick up when it's going full speed. Here we go. So the guy has just, he's just taking off right now on his lawnmower. He pulls forward out of the screen. I will fast forward a couple seconds. He's leaving the frame. You think the whole thing is over, right? And then he begins to back up the lawnmower. Here he comes back into view. If you watch his right hand, you see he's reaching into what appears to be a pocket. Maybe it's his waistband. Somewhere in there, he has a gun. And right there, you can see his handgun comes up. It's right there in the middle of the screen. Looks to be a revolver, probably a snub nose of some kind. He has now drawn a handgun on the neighbor. So the neighbor, who is the guy with the camera, observes all this, and he has to react. He turns around, and you can see he also is carrying a handgun on his right hip. Obviously, he knew the situation was getting more and more out of control, enough that he was carrying when confronting this neighbor. He draws his handgun, and right here, you see the guy in the lawnmower. You see his arm come up. You see that arm lock out, and the fence post is blocking it, but his handgun, his revolver comes up, and he's aiming at the property owner who has the camera. In that same instant, but after the guy on the lawnmower, the guy here in the, in the, the front side of the frame, raises his pistol, and he begins to engage the threat. Let's keep hitting play. We watched the video with the volume up, and it appears as though there's approximately nine, maybe 10 shots fired, and it's obviously the case that both sides are firing. Now, the guy we see right now certainly fired more at the guy who ended up falling off of his lawnmower and actually flipped his lawnmower. 
But there are also shots coming, as you're going to see right here, coming through the grass at this guy and his wife who was out there. You can see right there, his gun just came up right through the middle of the screen. He just raised his gun. So despite being shot, I'll back it up for you guys and play it again. Hold on. Despite being shot, his gun comes up right here. Right there, his gun is up. He is still trying to acquire a target and shoot the guy in the yard who just backed out of the frame. There are fire, uh, firing continues. There are shots coming through the grass. You want to see a bullet impact in the, in the grass here momentarily. Both sides are actively still firing. There comes a shot right there, came right through the grass. You can see how it disrupts. Uh, the grass pattern, and then the shooting stops. And then again, like I said, you fast forward six to 10 seconds, you think it's over, and the guy who was hit on the ground four times in the chest stands up as though it's magic, and he takes off. This is still in slow motion, mind you. He takes off walking across the yard. I do not think he is armed at that point. Certainly his left arm is disarmed. We can't quite get a, a good view uh, of his rights because of the foliage, but we believe that he is disarmed at that point. Now, let me cut to the chase on what happened, and then we'll discuss some of the details. So this case involved the neighbor, the guy you see right here, his name was Jeffrey Weigel, and he ended up getting charged by the DA's office with criminal negligence and recklessness involving a firearm. He was sentenced to prison for six months of confinement. The neighbor who engaged this guy, his name was Dean Keller. He is an Indianapolis firefighter and he was not charged in this situation. So clearly this video was proof positive to the, the county authorities on who began this fight and who had to respond to this case of lethal force or attempted lethal force. So first we have some tactical things to go over. Then we're going to discuss some legal things to go over. First things first, we have to carry all the time these days. This guy clearly had a situation with his neighbor. Things were definitely tense before this video was shot. But this day and age, you need to be carrying almost every single place you go outside of your home. Obviously, be careful and, and carry in places where you're legally allowed to carry. We're not going to give you legal advice on how to interact with a gun-free zone sign. I'm simply saying if you do not have a handgun in your immediate vicinity, when something pops off, you will simply not be able to defend yourself or your loved ones. This guy, uh, Mr. Keller, gets high marks for having a handgun available just in case. I want to also point out, though, the assumption factor here. It's easy to assume, if you're Mr. Keller, that having shot this guy at least four times in the chest, it'd be easy to assume the fight is over. But that clearly was not the case. Clearly, that was not the case. And so, well, there's a long time where people thought that having a handgun was sufficient. These days, you must be considering backup ammunition when you're out with your family and your loved ones. Because when the lull in the firing took place, that was the time for a tactical reload. Now, we don't know if Mr. Keller was carrying backup ammo or not. What I'm saying is that that was the time to do it. When the shooting stopped, at that point, Keller had shot somewhere we think around eight to nine rounds. If he had a 15-round magazine, which it looks like he had a full-size handgun, probably had six, maybe he had seven rounds left in the gun. But that's the time to do that tactical reload to make sure that you're topped off in case that fight resumes. Because, as we see right here, this guy was not out of the fight. <laughs> this guy, Mr. Weigel, was so angry that he stood up like Lazarus and walked right off the set. It was incredible. If Mr. Weigel had chosen to pick up his handgun and re-engage with Mr. Keller, that is where he'd have to have a fully topped off handgun. So use that break in the action to top off your handgun and be moving for cover and get off the X and get away from where that guy last saw you standing. I guess I'd finally close the tactical side by simply saying it's a sad fact but it's where things are today, you can no longer assume the best in all people around you. You just simply don't know these days what your neighbor's going through, 
what your coworker is going through, what someone who you've known for a long time from school, from church, what they are going through. And these days, you must be more cautious in considering a random situation like this that shouldn't be a big deal, but instead results in a gunfight. Be very careful with that. Now, when it comes to the legal side, we give high props to Mr. Keller for having a camera. Can you imagine if there was no camera there to document this? Can you imagine if Mr. Weigel um, called the police first, said he was shot by his neighbor, there was no independent way to verify who drew the firearm first, it'd be very likely Mr. Keller would be headed to prison today. Very likely indeed. So Mr. Keller gets high props for having a camera on site. My guess is the camera was there to watch the fence because Mr. Weigel clearly was trying to break down the guy's fence. But for whatever reason, the camera was there and it captured the entire thing. And that camera very likely saved Mr. Keller from criminal charges. Now, Indiana has a standard ground law. It was weak at first. It has been beefed up a couple of years ago. The state has a pretty strong and robust standard ground law. But I would also point out on the tactical side, it is important to be the first person to make the phone call to 911. I'm talking legal tactics at this point. Legally, it is important to be the first person who calls 911. Some situations are cut and dry. A home invasion, you're in your bed, someone breaks in your home, it's pretty obvious, you're the good guy, he's the bad guy, you had to use your firearm in self-defense. But some situations are much more confusing. This situation is an example of a confusing situation. The video helps him, but be sure once the fight is actually over, not, not this uh, situation here, but once the fight is actually over, be the first person to call 911. You want the authorities to see you as the victim when they first arrive on scene. If it's a if it's a if it's a back and forth, he he said, she, she said, it is critical. You're the first voice that they hear. So we give Mr. Keller high props again for having a firearm, for being armed, for having a quick reaction time when he saw the gun in Mr. Weigel's hand, for having the camera here to backstop himself. He gets high props, uh, high praise for that. But again, uh, wow, Mr. Weigel shot four times, stands up and walks away. That was a fight that only ended because Mr. Weigel chose to no longer engage. Guys, that's our take on this video. That's our reaction to this. What do you think? Leave your feedback in the comment section. What would you do? In fact, if you disagree that Mr. Keller was the innocent party, be sure and send as well. Let, me, let us know what you think about both sides of this debate. Follow our page, guys, for more content, and join the fight today at joinafa.org.